is the pain that you're feeling is the struggle that you're going for stemming from some area in your life where you're not absolutely going all in some area of your life where you've allowed external sources where you've allowed other people, other things to tell you, Oh, well, that's about all you can do. Is that possibly where some of the pain in your life is coming from? And for me, it really challenged me to real, to figure out like, what are those other areas of my life? Not running related, not even physical related. Like what are the other areas of my life, business relationships with my mind that I'm still just scratching the surface of my potential, still just scratching the surface of what's possible and how far I could potentially take it. All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, ooh, yeah. All right. This is episode 125 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am all alone again, but I will survive. <laughs> ah, all right. So in this episode, episode 125, we're going to talk about the run that I did uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and about what's coming up in a couple of days. So I'm going to just kind of lay the lay the foundation and kind of create the narrative of this story for you. And some of it's going to seem as though I'm kind of like hedging and, you know, making it sound like it's a greater feat than I am, which that's okay. This is my podcast. Um, but I just want to kind of set the stage for you. So about really about two months ago, two and a half, maybe three months ago, but really about two and a half months ago, I uh, started running. Um, I had been last year running uh, five miles a day, two, three days a week um, for probably about seven or eight months and just kind of fell off, um, quit doing it and then had a severe ankle sprain on a skateboard in a full suit, which was great. On Instagram, you can find it. Um, then I had a, uh, a upper quad uh, injury doing lunges at, at the gym. But once I got healed from both of those things, somewhat uh, started running about two and a half months ago, and quickly started doing you know five miles here and there, seven miles here and there, nine miles here and there. Then randomly one week, I was like, oh, I'm just going to start running longer distances. So I think on a Friday, I did 13.1. Tuesday, 13.1 Friday, 15. And so for me, that was crazy. Like the furthest I'd ever ran was seven miles. And all of a sudden now I did 13 twice and I did 15. So I was kind of starting to enjoy it. And, you know, I want to start this off by saying, um, you know, the reason for, for me running really isn't really has nothing to do with the distance has nothing to do with the time. I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm a 235 pound man. Uh, I'm not built for speed by any means. I'm not a, don't have a runner's body by any means. Um, but for me, what I realized was, you know, for three and a half years, I um, worked in a territory that I didn't live in. And that meant that I would drive and spend 200 nights plus in a hotel a year, but it's all, it was all driving travel. So I was driving from South Carolina to Georgia and going all over Georgia and back to South Carolina and down to Georgia and all over Georgia and back to South Carolina every week. I spent just countless, countless hours in my car. And during that time, I would listen to podcasts and audiobooks. I would listen to sermons and I would grow so much. My personal development was at an all time high because I was constantly being fed with just these positive messages and, and learning and growing, uh, becoming more self aware through that process. And what I realized is when I came off the road and had been, you know, home for, you know, close to a year that I was, I was missing that. Like I, I didn't have those extra, you know, one, two, three, four hours in a day where I was in the car. Um, and in really my self-development had diminished at that point, as far as the speed at which I was growing, the speed at which I was reading and listening to things. And so for me, running was that 
running was that quiet time. It's almost to me like a meditation. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm always listening to something. It's one, I think, step at some point down the road, I'll try to do like a race without listening to something, but it just sounds absolutely torturous and miserable. Um, but I'm listening to something every time. So whether it's a sermon or whether it's a, a book that I'm listening to or a certain podcast, a lot of times it's YouTube. Like if you have the YouTube red subscription or whatever, which we're not sponsored by YouTube, that would be nice. Um, but whatever the one that you pay for, like when you shut your phone down, it still plays like not shut it down. When you close your phone, it still plays the audio. So a lot of times I would just search YouTube videos and I would watch, uh, listen to the, the videos. And so for me, this, this was like opening my mind up to like this new idea that now I could, you know, have that same exact, you know, feeling of growth and just self-awareness and, and just constantly learning and becoming the best version of myself while also running, which, you know, obviously is, is a good thing to do cardiovascularly and, um, the amount of calories that you're burning. So that was really, you know, the, the bulk of the reason why I was doing it, it was just to get out get by myself, get quiet and be able to listen to something positive. Well, on a random Thursday, um, I had worked out legs that morning, extremely hard. And it was around 11 uh, AM, 12 PM. I had a little lull in my day and I started thinking to myself, I'm like, I need to do something crazy. I need to do some type of physical like challenge. And so I started looking up races and let me back up a little bit. This stemmed from a conversation. I had a conversation with Dan Walshman. For those of you that don't know Dan Walshman, um, he's an incredible human being, um, but ultra endurance athlete. He's done tons of crazy, like, you know, marathons, ultra marathons, hundred mile races, 24 hour races. Um, he just did the Everest challenge where he's like one of like eight or 11. I can't remember people that have ever ran the entire, you know, elevation of Everest. It's going to come like 23 straight hours of running uphill, uh, the entire time. Um, but just, you know, unbelievable in that world. Um, but he's also an incredible businessman has had his hands in a million different areas of business and has had some incredible incredible successes. Um, he spoke at our recent Top Gun event where we bring our top 25 coordinators in to here into Greenville, South Carolina. And he spoke and it was absolutely incredible. Uh, I was having coffee with him. We have developed a, a nice friendship with Dan and we were having coffee together. And he mentioned, um, you know, we just talked about a lot of uncertainty, chaos, stuff going on in business, you know, a lot of different things up in the air. He's like, man, you just need to, you know, go do some kind of, you know, big physical challenge. He said, you know, go do something like what seems impossible to you. What sounds impossible? I was like, well, at that point, that was like four or five weeks ago. I had further side run was seven miles. I was like, I mean, a marathon sounds impossible. I mean, right, right now that would be impossible. He's like, well, you just sign up for a marathon. Then in true Dan Waltzman fashion, he says, well, if, if you're going to do 26.2, you might as well run 30 miles. And if you're going to run 30 miles, you might as well do a 50 K. Cause that's like 31, 32 miles. And he kept on going like, if you're going to do 50 K all the way up to like, yeah, I think ran like across the country or something. I'm like, well, okay. I, I'll look for a marathon. So that Thursday, I'm just looking up races, thinking like in the next few weeks, the next few months, that way I can start training for something and start figuring out what I need to do. And I stumble upon this 50K race, 50 kilometers. I look at the date and it said June 29th. I was like, huh, that's in two days. <laughs> I'm like, that would be really difficult. It was, uh, it was a long 50K, so it was a full 32 miles. It said on there that we don't charge you extra for the extra mile. Um, and I don't, I, I really don't know why, but I just said, okay, I'll do it. And I registered. It was five and a half hours away. It was up in Farmville, Virginia. And if there's a more stereotypical name for a town that's in the middle of nowhere, Farmville is the perfect name. Uh, it was in the middle of nowhere and it was a night race. And so it started at 5 30 PM and was went into the night. Um, so a couple of things there. So number one, I start researching cause I know nothing about running. Like, I don't even know if I run the right way. Like I was kind of convinced in my head that I was probably like creating more work than, than needed based on like my stride and all that kind of stuff. 
also knew nothing about the nutritional side, the hydration side, like what's required to put your body through a 32 mile race. And so I start Googling some stuff. The first thing I Google, um, talking about prepping for a marathon, it says, whatever you do, make sure you don't train legs two weeks prior to the race. And I'm like, that's awesome. Cause I killed my legs this morning <laughs> and the race is in like 36 hours. It's great. So that was not good. Uh, when I woke up the next morning on Friday, my legs were so sore. When I woke up on Saturday before the race, my legs were even more sore. So that was a whole nother story trying to get rid of the soreness leading up to the race. Nonetheless, um, luckily I had a, a great friend of mine, uh, Becky Willenberg, um, her wife, Wendy's one of my dear, dear best friends, 10 years now. Um, Wendy works with us as well here. Um, but Becky has run a bunch of Ironman. She's done last year. She did a marathon a month, um, which is crazy. Uh, and so she helped me with like, Hey, make sure you buy this and buy that. And these base salts and these, you know, uh, different types of like carb and sugar, like little stinger chews and gels and the peanut butter packs and the, this and that and ketones and scratch and like all this stuff that like meant nothing to me. So I go buy all this stuff. I spent like a thousand bucks, um, because I had to buy like another pair of shoes. I just bought a new pair of, uh, Hoka, um, running shoes, which are incredible when bought a second pair that, that way I could switch halfway. I could put on a fresh pair of shoes and a fresh pair of socks, Bought all this gear camel back and these bottles and like just all this stuff. And so I hit, I hit the road after work on Friday, um, got up to Farmville, Virginia at like midnight Friday night. And I got to wake up and start preparing for this race, which is on Saturday, starting at 5 30 PM. So I wake up, I sleep in, I woke up at like 9 a.m. I'm like, I guess I'm supposed to be carb loading and staying hydrated. So I went and ate a bunch of pancakes at this little diner. No lie, this diner in Farmville, Virginia sat nine. It was like one bar top, like one bar that could fit nine people in there, but it's probably the best pancakes I've ever had in my life, of course. Um, Went back to the hotel room, took a nap, uh, slept for like about two hours, woke up stretching, just trying to get my legs to not hurt before I start a race. I'm like, this is ridiculous to be starting a race with your legs already hurting. Um, and really just trying to mentally prepare. I didn't really try to think too much into it. Uh, my goal on the front end, when I was talking to Dan Waltzman, when I was talking to Becky, uh, you know, I started saying stuff like, well, you know, I want to finish you know, I want to you know, finish at like a 13 minute mile pace. And they're like, whoa, 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 don't worry about the pace. Like the goal is to finish. And I was like, okay, that's doesn't sound as exciting, but okay, well, let's just finish. And I'm like, but I want to finish without having walked. Like I want to run the whole thing. Dan's like, don't, don't put that out there. Just finish. Because then like, if you do walk, you're going to feel like defeated. And then, you know, you may not finish the whole thing. I'm like, man, this is really kind of like dumbing it down. But nonetheless, I was like, cool, I just want to finish. And so, you know, we go to the start of the race. I'm like running late because I didn't realize how long it was going to take to like put all this stuff together. I was there by myself. I don't think I mentioned this. I was there by myself. So I drove up by myself. I didn't have like a crew or like someone helping me. So I'm like putting all this stuff into this big bag at this big Yeti cooler with like all this Pedialyte and water and Gatorade. And I soaked a couple of towels and put them down in the ice. And then I'm putting together all these different like goos and peanut butter things and these like stinger gummies and like, all, all this stuff. And I'm like mixing up these different drinks to put in the front pouch and ice water in the back. And, you know, completely separate, like set of clothes, separate set of shoes, socks, putting these like calf sleeves on this headband and like, just like fully equipped. And it's a way longer than expected. So I'm like racing over there and like I drive up and everyone's like already out, out there. I park, I, I created my own parking space. So the whole race, I was thinking that I was going to end at like 1230 in the morning and my car be towed. Um, but I kind of thought in my head that that'd be a cool story somehow, but I just like 
make my own parking space. I'm like running up there, carrying all this stuff and just put it down. I didn't even have time to stretch. I basically like, while they were like announcing like, Hey, here are the guide guidelines before we get started. I'm just kind of like, you know, shaking it out, trying to like at least do something and then go. And so go, uh, we went, it was like 87 degrees and we started at 5 30 PM and it was on gravel, like a gravel type trail which I'd never run on ever before as well. Uh, so that was different because your feet are kind of moving a little bit as you're going. Um, probably the most frustrating thing throughout, um, was the gravel because I didn't have the little gator things or whatever that cover your like ankle to your shoe. And so I kept getting rocks in my shoe and they would, you would feel like as you're running, you would kind of feel them work their way from like your heel to like your arch to like all the way to your toes but you didn't want to stop and, you know, empty your shoe because you're so stiff and you start to stiffen up so quickly when you stop, you're just like, screw it. I'll just run these last four miles of this leg, you know, with a giant rock on my big toe. Um, but all in all, uh, the experience was awesome. Um, you know, I stayed at a pretty good pace, about a uh, 12 minute pace and, you know, people were passing me left and right. Like, you know, I was, probably the biggest guy there. Um, I could definitely say that looking back, uh, there were like 250 people that ran the race. The majority of them were doing well, uh, you know, 120 of them were doing a half marathon and then about 132, uh, did the 50 K. And so it was 8.7 miles out and there was an aid station where you could fill up, you know, your water. They had some, you know, oranges, bananas, PB and J, stuff like that, which I took full advantage of. And then, you know, 8.7 miles back to the starting point. And so at that point you're about, you know, halfway through the race. And so at that point I changed socks, changed shoes. I put one of those soaking wet, ice cold towels over my head and, um, and, you know, started back on, you know, the, the second half of the race, uh, the second half of the race is when things got interesting because at that point, you know, it was around, I don't know, nine, nine 30 starting to get dark, had to put my headlamp on. And, you know, at this point it's just the people doing the 50 K and it was pretty spread out. Like you had a group of like people that do this all the time that were like, way out ahead. And then you had like these giant gaps between people. So I would go sometimes, you know, four or five minutes without seeing another person. Uh, the only thing it's pitch dark. Now, only thing you can see is just whatever your light's shining in front of you, which I realized also turned into like literally a bug light because all the bugs would just be attracted to this light that was on your forehead. So you're getting pelted in the head and face and like worried about inhaling bugs at that point. Um, but just kept going. And just kept going. The only time I ever walked was um, every two miles, and this is based on Re Becky's recommendation. Was she said about every twenty or so minutes, I needed to eat one of these, like either peanut butter pouch things or the carb like loaded gummy things. And so, you know, every two miles I would kind of speed walk while I took my, you know, camel back off and got those out and put it in my mouth and put my backpack on and start back running. So basically ran the whole time at the aid station, I would stop and, you know, have them, you know, refill my front two, uh, pouches of ice water, you know, grab something to eat real quick. And so that slowed my average time because those miles that there would be an aid station would be like 14 minute miles, which was kind of annoying as far as slowing down my ultimate average uh, speed, but just kept trucking, just kept trucking and people were passing me and passing me and passing me. But the coolest feeling of this whole race was the last, I'd say five miles. So that second half, you go down about five point something miles. There's an aid station. You go 2.9 miles further. Then you got, then you're at the turnaround and then you're just heading back to the, to the finish line. And those last five miles were really, really, really special. Uh, you know, it's pitch dark and you know, at that point you're, I've run what 27 miles. The furthest I'd ever run was 13. So at that time I've already ran a marathon. And you're just sitting there like almost in amazement of like how far you can actually push yourself. 
I'm like, man, I've already ran a marathon and I'm still running. Like I'm still good. Like this is, this is crazy. And the coolest part about it. And it, it kind of, to me brought back the David Goggins can't hurt me. If for those of you that can't haven't read that book, I almost said, can't read that book. Haven't read that book. Um, highly recommend it. It's actually sitting right here below me. Um, awesome book, pretty raw, pretty terrible language. So if that offends you, maybe don't read it. Um, but he talks about this idea of taking stole souls. Is it taking or stealing souls, stealing, taking souls, taking souls, this idea of like taking souls. And like in those moments where it's just like so difficult, just like basically like making it a game in your head. And like, he would like hum and like sing and it would just drive people absolutely crazy. And the coolest part about that last five miles is these people that have been passing me left and right throughout the first three fourths of this race, I started passing them and they were walking or they were like stopped. Like one guy was laying on the ground. I was like, dude, are you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, are you sure? Like, do you need anything? He's like, no, I'm good. He was just laying there on the side of the road. But people were walking and I was like past them. And every time I would pass them, it would give me like such like an energy boost. And it would give me such just like, um, I don't know what the word is. Um, it would just make me like super, super proud in that moment. I'm like, man, I'm like that dude looks like a runner <laughs> and he's walking right now and I'm still running. And so I started passing a bunch of people, um, those last five miles. And I think the last whole two miles, I didn't see a single person. There was nobody in my sight cause you would kind of look behind you and you could see the little headlights and there was nobody like anywhere close. And so those last two miles I'm coming in, I mean, I'm drenched, I'm exhausted. I got so many rocks in my freaking shoes, but I know I'm, you know, pulling into the, the final stretch, the most probably anticlimactic finish of all time. I want you to imagine this for me. You've just run this race. You've just ran 32 miles, like crazy. It's an ultra marathon, like 32 miles, the furthest you'd ever run 13 miles, all this stuff stacked against you. But the reality is it's 1230 in the morning. There were like four people at the finish line. This big finish line. It's got the big, you know, time up on the thing. There's like four people there, like waiting for their dad or waiting for their brother or their best friend. Four people there just kind of going, yay, good job. And I'm coming in running like freaking David Goggins coming in there to the finish line. And I pass the finish line. I just stop. I look around and see these four people and I'm like, well, I guess I'll go back to the hotel now. <laughs> like it was, it was so like anticlimactic. Like you think of the New York marathon, you got thousands of people with cowbells that like last stretch. And it's like this, like, you know, glorious moment. Like you think of that dun, 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 dun. like you're running in like slow motion. It was literally like four people that were like, Hey, Hey bro, good job. I'm like, thanks. I'm going to go. I'm going to go home now. I feel like Napoleon dynamite. I was just like, I'm going to go. So it was kind of weird at the end. Um, I felt like I could have kept going. That was the coolest part. Like I felt like I could have kept going. Like I felt like I had way more in the tank. It was, it was more comfortable if I had continued to run than stopping at that point, because I sat down for five minutes and I was taking my shoes off and I was putting this wet, you know, cold towel over my head, I sat down for five minutes and I was like, Oh, I'm going to do a Instagram story and, you know, kind of talk about the finish. When I stood up, it was horrendous. Like it was, I was in my, everything was like locking up. I was like, crap, if I would just kept on running, I'd be fine right now. Um, but it was really, really bad. Uh, when I, when I got up, um, but the coolest thing was being able to document this whole process, um, through Instagram stories, like every three, four or five miles I would jump on there and be like, Hey, I just passed mile 12 or Hey, I'm at mile 20. And I did a uh, post yesterday and it was from an Instagram story that I did. And it was like the moment when like, I knew there was nothing that was going to stand in the way of me finishing it, barring me like breaking my leg. Um, but there's this Instagram story where I'm just like selfie style looking into the camera and I'm like, just ate a PB and J just got my water refilled. And I looked at it and I was like, 
I feel unstoppable. <laughs> and I'm like halfway delirious, but it was like at the 22 mile mark, I think at that point. And I did like, I felt unstoppable. I really did. And I kept on saying that to myself over and over and over that, that I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Like that. This is nothing. Um, coincidentally, people keep asking me like, what, what were you listening to the entire time? The only thing I listened to as odd as it is, was Erwin McManus. I listened to 11 sermons um, from Mosaic Church, Erwin McManus. I sent him a DM telling him that, and he responded, which is pretty cool. Um, but that's all I listened to the whole time. And I can tell you, pitch dark with a headlamp on in the middle of the night, some of those sermons, I felt like he was actually just talking to me. Like I, I was like looking around like, like, is anybody, was this recorded live? Was this for anybody else but me? Um, but it was an incredible experience to be able to kind of go through that. And you know, that's a whole nother podcast, probably not the sales Wolves podcast. Um, but it was a really, really cool experience. And so let me kind of close this out by saying my biggest takeaway, my biggest takeaway is that we are all capable of so much more than we realize. Like going into that race, having ran 13 miles, like it was ridiculous for me to think that I could do it. But once I got out there and started, I felt like I could have done way more. Uh, and I think, you know, there's so many areas of our life that we don't realize how much more we have in the tank, how much more that we're capable of, what our potential, where our potential truly ends. And I think the, the most interesting part was when I quit, when I stopped, like when I finished, that was when the pain set in. And so if you think about that in your life, any pain that you've gone through or any pain that you may be going through right now, is it possible that it's coming from you stopping short or it's coming from you quitting something or it's coming from you not pushing yourself as far as you could go? Is the pain that you're feeling, is the struggle that you're going for stemming from some area in your life where you're not absolutely going all in? Some area of your life where you've allowed external sources, where you've allowed other people, other things to tell you, oh, well, that's about all you can do. Or, yeah, that's just, that's, that's not something that I would do if I were you. Or, you know, I, I don't think that's such a good idea. Is that possibly where some of the pain in your life is coming from? And for me, it really challenged me to real, to figure out like, what are those other areas of my life? Not running related, not even physical related. Like what are the other areas of my life, business relationships with my mind that I'm still just scratching the surface of my potential, still just scratching the surface of what's possible and how far I could potentially take it. And what pain will be caused if I don't continue to keep pushing? What pain will ultimately cause me to cramp up and cause me uh, to feel fatigued if I don't keep going? And so that would be my challenge from this podcast is to start looking at all the areas of your life and look at which areas have I just stopped pushing myself? Like I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast that I used running as a way to reintroduce self-development and read and listening to audio books and podcasts and sermons I had to reintroduce that because I realized that was an area that I had stopped pushing. And so what area of your life have you stopped pushing? Have you stopped, you know, moving forward in? And if the pain hasn't started, it's coming. And so the quicker you can become aware of where those areas are that you have let up, the quicker that you can adjust and start going all in in those areas. And so for me, we're going to see where we can take it uh, physically. Um, I'm doing another 50K uh, in three days. It's uh, on the 13th. Um, so looking forward to that one. Pablo is going to be at that one. So we'll have a little more, a little bit more. Uh, uh, highly produced, uh, higher produced, uh, quality than my selfies in the middle of the night. Uh, this one's during the day as well. Uh, but it's called the Reaper challenge. The one I'm doing is called the death pepper 50 K it's through the middle of the day in July in South Carolina, 50 K. So that will be fun. And we'll see where it goes from there. I have no idea. 
Um, but I'm extremely grateful that I had that random urge on a Thursday to sign up for that race because, um, it was quite an experience that I'll never forget. And it is something that I know will propel me to do greater and greater and greater things. And so I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing a little bit of the recap of that. And I hope you took something away from that. And I hope you really take that challenge seriously of searching for those areas in your life, um, that may be either causing pain or will cause pain in the future if you don't hammer down. So with that, this is episode 125 of the sales wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!